Regression discontinuity design is a method for causal analysis that is not very common in management research, but it's very useful in certain scenarios and there are quite a few articles about how to make causal claims that actually uh, re recommend this technique as an alternative when it's applicable. So what is regression discontinuity design and uh, why it would be useful and under which scenarios? The idea of regression discontinuity design is that uh, there is a regression line or it can be some kind of other kind of function that you estimate through the data and then there is a discontinuity which represents a causal effect. There, this is a bit of an abstract presentation and I'll get to the details a bit later. But the key idea here is that we have assignment in the treatment and control group which is non-random. So we are not as researchers putting these groups in the treatment and these observations to control but we know that the allocation is based on some variable that we observe and we know that there's a cutoff or a threshold and if you pass the threshold then you belong to the treat treated and if you don't pass the threshold then you belong to the control. And the key idea here is that uh, around this threshold here so the, uh, the observations that almost made it to the treatment but not quite who are the last ones who belong to the control are nearly identical to those that just got into the treatment. So if you consider for example uh, kids who go to school there is a clear cutoff at least in Finland if you were born in uh, December 31st you go to, to uh, school with all the kids that were born in the same year. If you were born on the next day on January 1st then you go to our school with those kids that were born on the next year. The difference between uh, December 1st and 31st and January 1st is not that great but it is uh, in terms of age but it is uh, a big difference in whether you go to school on a particular year. So there's a clear cutoff. Another thing is, uh, is for example voting. If we have two candidates and we vote who becomes the president if the candidate receives 49.9% of vote versus 50.1% the candidate's popularity is, is about the same but there's a big difference because the threshold of getting uh, to be the president or whatever office you're running is at 50% if there are two people in the election. That kind of thing. So we have this, uh, this variable x that determines the selection and we have a clear cutoff which separates who go to control who go to treatment and then we can estimate the causal effect. So this is uh, easier to uh, go understand through an example. So let's um, take a look at the example. So this is a, a funding agency in Finland that gives uh, grants to companies who apply for money. And uh, the idea of the grants is that it helps, the grants are supposed to help these companies to develop their business, grow, expand internationally and so on. And we want to understand whether the grant has a causal effect on company performance. It's of course we cannot simply compare those companies who got the grant and those who didn't because this agency picks companies based on their potential performance. So if there is a very low potential company then it doesn't get any money. So there is no possibility that that company will get the grant. But if there is a very high potential company then that will almost certainly get a grant if they apply for it. So we can, if we compare those companies that didn't get the grant and those that got the grant we don't really know whether it's because uh, it, they were the good companies that would have grown anyway that got the grant or we don't know or whether it's the effect of the grant that caused the difference. So how could difference in differences be applied in this scenario? Let's assume using this figure from Sivek's article that uh, for the sake of argument they are whether a company got, gets a grant is treated or doesn't get the grant control is uh, based on a score. So let's assume that this agency scores all applications on a scale between 0 and 100 and if you get 50 points you get the grant if you get less than 50 you don't get the grant and of course uh, the company performance correlates highly with the score of the funding application because this uh, agency takes past performance and future potential into consideration when assigning the scores. Now our causal effect causal claim here depends on, on comparing these companies that just were just 
below 50 percent. So they did not, or 50 uh, points, they didn't get the money. And these companies who are just about the threshold got the money. So that's the difference. And uh, let's take another example to understand the principle of difference or regression discontinuity design. This is from Flummer's paper and she has written a, a couple of papers using RDD and uh, she's looking at votes in a shareholder meeting. So this paper is about long-term orientation and uh, the vote is about whether a CEO gets a compensation package or not that is focused on, on the long-term performance of the company. The idea here is that uh, shareholders and, and investors who value the stock, so this is the, uh, the return of the stock or abnormal returns, if, if it's sure that or almost certain that the company will adopt the CEO compensation package, then that will be uh, taken into account in the stock price well before the election or the vote. And if it's almost certain that the company will not adopt the compensation package, that will also be taken into account by the investors well before the actual vote. But if it's 50-50, if it's investors don't know whether these packets will go through or not, then they really cannot anticipate it. So the, the idea here is that um, there is victory margin. So uh, whether the, uh, the packets was approved or not approved and these close votes, investors really cannot anticipate the result of a close vote. So uh, if we compare the, the just rejected and just accepted votes, then we can get the causal effect of uh, adopting that package. And why this goes down is that the investors really cannot anticipate it. So here the uh, idea is that if we know that there is a, a small chance that the package will be adopted, then that information has been available for the investors and it's also already included in the stock price. Same here, there are no abnormal returns because investors are already counting uh, the fact that this package most likely will pass in the stock price. So only these uncertain scenarios we have the, the big difference. And that big difference is the causal effect. How do you in practice then implement this analysis and how do you report this analysis? Regression discontinuity design is something that not all researchers are aware of. So it's a good idea to explain the uh, idea of the analysis to your readers. And that's what Plummer does in her article. And uh, she tells that between 49.9 and 50.1, there's probably not much difference. It could have gone either way and chance affects the assignment here whether it's, it goes through or not. How then do we actually estimate the causal effect here? Well, and that's the equation we want to estimate the coefficient for passing. And quite often we cannot, we cannot assume that there are relationship between uh, the margin, whether it goes through or not, and uh, the uh, stock performance that it would be linear. In rare cases that would be true and in practice in regression discontinuity design we estimate some kind of polynomial model, some kind of curve or uh, a non-parametric model which can be expressed as betas but this polynomial case is easier to understand as, as a regression model so I'll focus on that. So this article estimates a third order polynomial for the left hand side here that didn't go through and then another third order polynomial for the right hand side for these uh, proposals that actually were, were adopted. And how you run the regression model is that we have first here, this is the third order polynomial. So it's, it's uh, the, the margin to the first, second or third power, each have a regression coefficient. And then we uh, have the same first, second and third power of margin and we multiply it by pass, which is a binary variable indicating whether the proposal was passed or not, and that estimates another polynomial. So we are basically estimating a polynomial here, and then we are estimating how much this second polynomial differs from the first polynomial. These actual coefficients for the polynomials are not important, but they are useful because we want to understand the trend right before the cutoff and right after the cutoff 
to uh, estimate this, this causal effect, this gap here. So uh, we don't, we want to kind of like control for the fact that investors are anticipating a certain kind of decision and then uh, that decision is, is uh, modeled or that anticipation is modeled with this polynomial. The causal effect is the marginal effect of pass at margin is zero. So here passing is uh, zero uh, means that it passed and uh, negative number means that it didn't pass. In some other scenarios the cutoff may not may something be something other than zero. So if this was uh, the actual votes and not the margin then uh, the cutoff would be 50 and the causal effect would be marginal effect at vote share equals 50 for pass. So in practice it's uh, probably easiest to estimate to estimate this kind of model is to uh, convert your data so that the cutoff point is at zero in which case this pass directly this beta one gives the causal effect otherwise you need to start using for example status margins or another uh, way of calculating the marginal effect to calculate what are the values of, of these or all these interactions at the, the cutoff point. So how does uh, regression discontinued design compare with, with other designs? This technique is sometimes compared with randomized experiment and they have the similarity that in both cases we know exactly what is the source of variation of the independent variable. So recall that uh, the, the problem of endogeneity when the source of variation of the independent variable also uh, affects the dependent variable. So whenever you have a potential endogeneity problem you need to think about why does the, uh, the dependent variable x vary in my, my sample. So here we know in randomized experiments it's the, uh, the source of variation for, for x is our uh, randomization in regression discontinuity design the selection process is, is known completely and there is a there is small chance element that can affect whether you go right before right uh, above or right below the threshold and that chance of uh, fluctuation that small randomness is the, the reason why we can make causal claims. So if we have a a predicted vote margin of 50% then it can go either way we don't really know there's randomness involved. These techniques make some assumptions so our standard explanation of this technique uh, start that the assumption that they make is the stable unit treatment uh, value assumption which means that each uh, observation the, uh, the value of the treatment for each observation does not depend on whether any other observation got the treatment. So if you consider that from the multi-level pers modeling perspective that would mean that the contextual effects are zero. So that's equivalent to the, uh, the Sutva assumption. Then there is no attrition. So uh, we assume that the, every person who uh, goes to the treatment is actually measured from the outcome. Then we have treatment contamination and uh, treatment misallocation which refer to uh, the control or cases assigned to the control who actually receive the treatment. So it's possible that if we go and uh, we give some advanced teaching materials to half of teachers, other half don't, then those half that got the advanced teaching materials will share the materials with those who belong to the control group. So that's the treatment contamination. Then we have a uh, treatment misallocation which is also sometimes referred to non-compliance. So if we have persons uh, assigned to the treatment group then uh, maybe they forgot to take their medication or something like that. Treatment manipulation refers to if the scenarios where, where people know that they are or subjects know that there will be allocation of the treatment and control and they try to game the system to get to the treatment and that causes problems. There is also uh, a difference in, in what these effects estimate. So this um, randomized experiment gives us the average treatment effect and uh, regression discontinuity design gives us average treatment effect at the cutoff. So whether we can generalize from those close 50-50 votes to other votes it's, it's not, not clear. So uh, generalizability to other scenarios is, is not that, that clear here. In randomized experiments we have more power because we don't estimate anything except the effect of the treatment. In RDD there is more complexity. We have to estimate the trend before and trend after and that decreases our, our statistical power. Let's take a look at how these uh, different assumptions are investigated and justified using the Flammer's paper. And uh, 
one of the things that it's useful to check is whether there's a difference in, in how or difference in distribution in whether proposals are accepted or not accepted. And if there is a big peak here right after the threshold, like if you if you look at for example p-values in, in published articles, there is a peak right uh, after 0 0.05, then uh, that means that uh, that's evidence that people are gaming the system to get right, uh, get just about the threshold. And that's a problem for this technique. And how this uh, assumption is in, in inspected or, or tested or assessed is that you can plot the, the frequencies of different values like Sinan here and uh, there's also McRary test which is a formal test for the assumption that there is no peak right before or right after the treatment uh, assignment. So we we'll look at the, uh, the vote shares here. Another uh, important assumption is that there's no confounding. So uh, no other variables ex should that are in our model should depend on the, the treatment assignment. So for example uh, here Flammer studies all the variables that she had right before the treatment and uh, then shows that there is there is no effect of, of the treatment on on these these variables that are super not supposed to be affected. So if vote is today we can study values of our control variables yesterday and uh, of course the vote cannot have a causal effect on past but if results or analysis shows that there is a difference between the treatment and control before the actual day of the vote then that indicates that there is a potential confounding factor that we, we did not consider in our analysis. Regression discontinued design sometimes also uses this uh, sensitivity analysis. So uh, you can fit the same model into different subgroups. For example, you can fit uh, choose uh, just a small uh, amount of observations right around the cutoff or you can choose uh, different uh, ways of estimating the trends before and after and, and so on. If your assumptions fail then you can apply something called fuzzy regression discontinuity design. The idea of, of the fuzzy RDD is that there are, the decision of who goes to control and who goes to treatment is not clear. It's not like like you have a 50% vote and if it's more, the actual vote is more, then the motion is pa no, then it's passed. If it's uh, less, then it fails. But it's, it, there is some uncertainty. And this can occur if there is a treatment misallocation. So let's say that uh, we, we assign people the treatment to receive a medication. Some of them decide not to take the medication or this could be treatment contamination. So we assign some people to, to control but somehow they get their uh, hands on the medication and take the medication. And in this Flammer's paper they were uh, studying the effects of long-term orientation of the company and uh, they were measuring that through the CEO compensation packages whether a long-term compensation package was adopted or not. Of course the idea here is that if a CEO gets a package that rewards for long-term objectives then they will be more long-term oriented because that's how it work, should work. But it's possible that the CEOs ignore the package so they will optimize short-term results even if they are rewarded for long-term or it's possible that the package actually does not have an effect on the CEO performance so the CEO would be long-term oriented anyway even without the package. And this is a, a scenario where a fuzzy RDD could be useful. And uh, this is very similar to how you would deal with the experimental research, in experimental research with the scenario where some of your people don't take the medication and so on. So uh, you have non-compliance in treatment and, and the, the, uh, the remedies for that scenario are the same. In practice, uh, you apply instrumental variables. So we take um, the uh, this, the compensation, whether the compensation package for long-term performance was adopted or not as our instrument and then we measure uh, whether the uh, CEO actually uh, behaves in a way that is, is long-term oriented and we use the package adoption as an instrument for the long-term orientation of the CEO and then we are in the second stage we have the instrumented variable regressed uh, that predicts performance. 
So this is simple application of instrumental variable analysis. Here they have a two-stage two least scores analysis. So let's take a summary of regression discontinuity design. This is something that is, is uh, very useful if it can be applied, but it's not very commonly applied in, in management research. It could be that we don't have uh, experience with the technique or it could be that the scenarios where this technique is applicable are not so common. So, so how does RDD work and wh why you would use RDD? Well, it's first critically important that we have a variable, a selection variable that determines whether the group goes to treatment or control and that there's a clear cutoff of whether uh, a case goes to treatment or goes to control. For example, funding application score, perhaps you are uh, studying athletes and there is a qualification for Olympics. You have to run uh, 100 meters under a certain time to qualify for the Olympics, otherwise you don't. Perhaps there is a, a vote and 50% is required for pass. If you fail uh, below 50%, even at one vote, then it's not going to pass and that kind of thing. So uh, in compared to randomized experiments where we randomize the treatment here, we know what is the value or what is the social variation of the treatment variable. Then we have assumptions. These are the same pretty much that are for experiments and uh, for example, those who go to control actually don't get the medication. Those who go to treatment all get the medication. If that fails, then we can apply instrumental variable techniques to deal with that problem. Uh, the, te the results that we got on our randomized experiment, they have more statistical power. They're easier to calculate and they're more generalizable. In RDD, when we calculate the, the difference between those who were right below the cutoff and right above the cutoff, then we really can generalize only uh, to, to scenarios right at the cutoff, slightly below, slightly above. But for example, votes that are clearly going to fail, we don't really, really know whether we can generalize from RDD. With randomized experience, we could, with RDD, we don't. RDD is also more complicated to implement, but then again, you don't need to do randomization to do this technique. 